good evening all yeah. so i'll be presenting about uh, swelling blisters and compartment syndrome associated with tibial condyle fractures and how do we manage it so tibial condyle fractures constitute about 1 to 2% of all fractures as we all know that most of these fractures are high velocity injuries and uh, most of the time the impact is always a direct impact with a valgus and varus force during the time of impact the force is not only is dissipated to the bones but also to the entire the surrounding tissues also 90% of the schatzger type 5 and type 6 are associated with the surrounding soft tissue injuries the incidences of compartment syndrome is as high as 18% in schatzger type 6 so whenever uh, whenever there is a tibial condyle fracture the force is dissipated to the soft tissues and uh, the quantum of the injuries on the soft tissues the tissues react in three different ways whenever the force is very minimum there is a swelling and then simple tibial condyle fracture whenever there is a moderate to severe amount of force which is direct uh, direct impact on the tibial condyle you will get a blisters and whenever the force is very uh, uh, very high velocity injury is there it ends up in an tense swelling within compartment syndrome so whenever you get a, a tibial condyle fracture with the swelling we the first first and the most important thing is that to immobilize the limb with an above knee slab elevate the limb give some ice packs application analgesics anti inflammatories wait for 2 or 3 days till the swelling comes down and you need to look out for the wrinkle sign so once this sign is present then you can go ahead and do the fixation so here is an example of an 40 year old male he came with an type 5 schatzger's fracture with a moderate amount of swelling and the same day it was posted for a bicolumnar plating so this is on the day 1 uh, you can see that the tibial condyle fracture we have stabilized with a bicolumnar plate the articular restoration is well maintained the axis also is attained on uh, the first uh, uh, first day dress, uh, second day dressing the wound was very healthy and the third and uh, and the second day dressing on the day 4 you can see a mild erythema with a small increase in the pain so there was a redness with the mild soakage was there we did a blood count and their counts were elevated so we put them on empirical antibiotics we wait for one or two days the patient didn't symptomatically improve so uh, the on day 7 we planned it for a wound wash so when we opened we can could see that the entire anterior compartment muscle has gone for a necrosis so the entire anterior compartment muscles was debrided and it was removed so we waited uh, since there was of no infection or uh, no, no pus formation was there so we didn't remove the plate so anyway we re debrided on the 9th uh, day and a partial closure was done another two days we waited and we did an gastrocnemius flex with the myofortunus cover was there so this is the an x-ray at the end of 6 weeks and uh, the soft tissue has healed well at the end of 4 months the fracture started consolidating and at the end of 7 months the fracture is united and uh, we were lucky to get round with a soft tissue with that not much of any uh, infection or a persistent infection and the patient had a good clinical outcome the next thing is that in the blisters whenever there is uh, moderate to severe amount of uh, force which is dissipated to the surrounding tissues there are two types of blisters which usually happens one is the clear fluid uh, blisters other is then hemorrhagic blisters so when you have a clear fluid blisters it is usually a moderate type of injuries the pathology is that that the separation is within the epidermis some of the epidermal cells are still attached to the dermis and in these here blisters the average healing time is 7 days the next type is the hemorrhagic blisters it is usually associated with very velocity of injuries the separation is at the dermal levels the dermis is completely separated and the average healing time is around out 14 days so how do you manage with these blisters the first important thing is that whenever the joint whenever the joint is uh, uh, subluxed or uh, uh, you need to put them on an knee spanning x fixer if the joint is not dislocated you can put them on an above knee slab do a dry dressing 
de-roofing of the blisters, you puncture the small blisters, wait till the re-epithelization of the skin and the scab formation is there. Once you get this uh, uh, re-epithelization and scab formation, you can go ahead for, and do the fixation. This is an another case in 40 year old male who presented as uh, is in uh, type uh, 6 Schatzgerts type. On presentation, he had a small blisters over the, the lateral aspect of the uh, proximal tibia. So since the joint was uh, subluxed, we went in for a close reduction and then knee spanning X fix. So at the end of 24 hours, you can see that the blisters has been increased. At the end of second day, the full entire, both the medial as well as the lateral aspect you can see multiple small as well as big blisters were there. This is end, till, till day five, there is an increased tendency of the blisters to increase. Once you cross four day, uh, fourth or uh, fifth day, the blisters started settling down. We need to do a, a puncturing of the blisters. We need to do a daily dressing. So at the end of seven or eight days, the blisters start settling. We wait for another two or three days for the tissues to other scap to re-epithelization. So once that re-epithelialization is been usually does at 12 to 14 days. So once this is there, you give a wash, then you plan for a fixation. In this patient around at 14th or 15th day, we did a uh, uh, plating. We did a bicolumnar plating. Medial side, we did a biological plating because the blisters were more on the medial side. And the lateral side, we did, uh, we did a open uh, plating. This is the end of four weeks. So you can see the X-ray is fine. The skin also started, the skin, uh, there is no much of uh, skin complication, there is no blisters over there. At the end of three months, you can see the fracture is getting consolidated and uh, there is no soft tissue infection. And at the end of three months, the patient had a good clinical outcome. So this is another patient who was 32 year old male with a bicolumnar tibia fracture. When he presented, he presented with this, he had a severe uh, hemorrhagic blisters were there. So we did, a, 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 we, since the, there is no much of uh, dislocation was there, we put him on above knee slab. We did a limb elevation. We punctured the blisters. This is on the day three, on day seven also at the same time. At the end of uh, 10 days, the blisters started settling. We waited for another two or three days for the re-epithelialization is there. So once uh, the skin at uh, the end of 14 days, there was re-epithelization and this, all the uh, blisters healed well and the scap formation also was present. So then we took up for the surgery. We did a bicolumnar plating for this. Post-operative period, one or two dressings, there was soakage, but eventually it healed well. By end of two months, you can see that there is no skin complication is there. The fracture is united well. This is at the end of six months, the fracture is consolidated and the patient had a good clinical outcome. So how do you manage a proximal tibia fracture within compartment syndrome? As we all know that it is a true orthopedic emergency, two to nine percent of the tibia fractures do uh, have a compartment syndrome. So uh, uh, compartment syndrome is tense, swollen Chinese skin, patchy stretch pain is positive, paresthesia and the decreased pulsenessness. So whenever you have a, a, a tibial condyle fracture within compartment syndrome, the first and the foremost thing is that you do a, a fasciotomy. So here is an example of a 24-year-old male who presented with an proximal tibia fracture type, uh, type 6. So he had a signs of compartment syndrome. We did a compartment release. We put him on a knee spanning X fix. So on the second day, it was planned for soft tissue cover. We, we went and had it and a plating also. We did a lateral plating and after that an SSG cover was done. So at three months post-op, the patient at the end of six weeks, he had a small discharging sinus. We, we maintained with, the, with an oral antibiotics. We allowed it. We got some time to settle so that the fracture will get consolidated. He was on an antibiotic for a long time, but till the end of three months. But the end of three months, we saw that the fracture started consolidating. We convinced and we waited for another three months. It was there was no obvious or a, uh, a clinically uh, uh, signs of infection was there. But the patient do had a small uh, ooze from the lateral aspect. So we put them on antibiotics. We waited for the fracture to get consolidated. Even though there is a varus collapse, we accepted that when we waited. 
by end of six months the fracture started uniting and got it consolidated and by end of nine months the fracture is completely consolidated so we went and uh, went and do the implant removal after the implant removal the uh, infection settled but uh, but the end of two months uh, two years also the fracture is united but there's no signs of infection this is another case of a 45 year old male he had a bicolumnar tibia fracture he had signs of compartment syndrome so we did a, a compartment release we we did on a knee spanning x fix these are the post op x ray in this patient we did an early soft tissue cover on the third day or fourth day we waited for the skin conditions to improve the uh, skin conditions and the ssg settled at the end of 3 weeks at the end of 3 weeks we went and do a bicolumnar bi plating this is the immediate post op x ray this is at the x ray at 4 weeks and this is the x ray at 6 weeks the fracture started consolidating and the wounds also there was no much of wound complication so at 6 months time the fracture is united and the 9 months you can see the at 9 months time the fracture is united completely soft tissue also healed well there is no skin complication or a wound complication was there this is the end of one year you can see that uh, uh, the uh, there is no no skin complication the wound is completely healed well and the patient had a good clinical out so uh, there is an another patient with uh, with an 50 uh, 55 year old male he had an compartment syndrome fasciotomy was done knee spanning x fix was done we waited we did a soft tissue cover on the fourth or fifth day the soft tissue settled at the end of 3 weeks this is one side we closed primarily the other side we did a ssg so this is on the fifth day so these are the x rays and six weeks later once the soft tissue heals uh, we did a, a definitive fixation we did a medial column uh, medial column plating and a screw for the lateral uh, this one this is at the end of two months the fracture consolidated uh, started consolidating and the patient had a good range of knee movement so the take home message is that whenever the swelling is there you immobilize the limb with an above knee slab limb elevation and ice pack application whenever a tibial condyle fracture is there, uh, with blisters is there the first and the foremost thing is that you need to uh, do a limb elevation above knee slab dry dressing you need to deroof the blisters antibiotic wait till the scab formation and do the uh, uh, wait till the scab formation and reepithelialization then go on interview in case of compartment syndrome is there you do a fasciotomy knee spanning x fix you do a soft tissue cover in the third day or fourth day once the soft tissue covers uh, settles at the end of two weeks then you do a delayed recon bony reconstruction thank you mm -hmm.